approach to oh. introduce Carrie Z. Dyke. She's a senior at Fairview and has been active throughout her high school career and will continue to be active. Um, and before I steal any of her thunder, let's just get her up here. Welcome, Carrie, please. where I will graduate this Sunday as the valedictorian of my class. After high school, I will be attending the Ohio State University to major in early childhood education and minor in agriculture communications. Throughout high school, I was involved in many different clubs and activities. I played volleyball, basketball, and softball, where we had various amounts of discuss, or success in all three sports. I also participated in student council and FFA as the president of both organizations, and I was the vice president of the National Honor Society. In each of these clubs and activities, I learned how to work with different people, show up on time, and create a schedule to help myself be organized. The club that most impacted my life was FFA, or Agri-Science Education. There are three parts to Agri-Science Education. Classroom and lab instruction, supervised agriculture experience, and student leadership. When combined, these three factors make up what it means to be an ag class. First is classroom instruction. When students enroll into ag, they will be learning in the classroom, but also spending time in the shop, learning physical skills and how to build or create structures through a variety of lessons. As freshmen, the class is called Agricultural, Food, and Natural Resources. Freshman students learn about soils, dairy cattle, water systems, digestive systems, and the muscle systems of farm animals. A few of the lessons we did were working in the shop, building a birdhouse, and then we learned about like what kind of habitat the birdhouse lives in. We also did, did and made activities to help us learn the muscle systems and the bone structures of about seven different farm animals. In sophomores, the students take a class called plant and animal science. In this class, they learn about soils, plant development, woodworking and welding. And then at Fairview, we also do a unit where we bring in chickens and we do put them in the incubator and raise them from hatch and then to butchering. And we learn about how to take care of chickens and then we also do lessons on them a couple times a week to figure out how are we raising these chickens and how can we make it better for the next year. Juniors at Fairview enroll in an agronomy class where we learn about weeds and seeds. Uh, we learn about around 40 different, 40 different weeds and seeds where we have to go through, memorize them, figure out what they look like, um, are they danger to plants that we want to grow? And how can we get rid of them or stop their growth? Um, we also learn about chemical applications, which kind of goes along with the weeds because we're figuring out how to stop the growth and then fertilizer applications and calculations. Uh, this year I was in the agribusiness class. That's a senior class, but there's also some younger students who can choose to enroll in that. Uh, we created resumes and cover letters that we can use I used it for like my summer job application on other kids they're just going to keep them on hand for scholarship applications or maybe even future jobs. Uh, we had to create our own business plan starting from the ground up. We had to give a description on what our business is going to be and just kind of throughout the year we would work on it a couple times a week to figure out okay how can we make this business better. Uh, a boy in my class actually is making his business come to life. He is choosing to start a homegrown chicken business, which she has started this spring. Uh, we also learned about the trade and sales of grain and other agriculture related products. The next part of agriculture education is a supervised agriculture experience or an SAE project. Um, in ag class, students are required to create a project that interests them. It could be as simple as growing a garden, or like I was saying, some students start their own business. Uh, in high school, my SAEs were showing my hogs through 4-H, cash renting land, which I put to corn and soybeans. And then I also had a project that was titled Agriculture Education, where I would go to the elementary school two to three times a week, teach them a lesson, read them a book, or do a little project. The third and final part of agri-science education is student leadership. To wrap it up, it's pretty much FFA. In FFA, we do contests and competitions, community service, and other projects. For contests, the ones that I participated in in high school were dairy cattle, general livestock, soils, agronomy, agriculture communications, job interview, and public speaking. All of these were really good for me because I was able to form relationships with students from other schools and communicate with 
adults that are heavily involved in the ag industry. My favorite contest was the job interview and public speaking contest because I feel like I was able to benefit from those the most because that is something you're using on a daily basis. Uh, the next part is community service. Uh, one thing that Fairview FFA does is a few times a year during football season, we would pick up all the trash at the football field. It was just an easy project where many kids could show up on a Saturday morning or if like the football boys could come help us after. Uh, we volunteered at the county fair a lot, setting up or cleaning up after fair. Um, this year, the FFA members are, are planning to repaint the old agricultural barn and building because they kind of want to restructure that and make it a little more appealing. Um, my favorite community service project that we have done is the bike drive. Uh, last spring, I was actually talking to my mom about how a lot of people just have extra bikes sitting around and there are young kids, especially in our community, that don't have that. So I talked to my ag teacher and we kind of got the word out. We put it in some newspapers and on social media and we brought in, I think, 95 bikes from not only our school district, but we were kind of driving around 20 minutes to pick more up and we were able to donate 40 back to kids in our district and then another 25 to kids in area schools. So that was really nice because even if the bikes weren't in the best of shape, our students in our ag program could use their shop skills to refurbish those bikes and make them run again. Uh, the last part to FFA is the projects we do. So just recently our sophomore class planned a petting zoo. Um, we do this every single year and the sophomores have people sign up to bring in animals, um, some kids bring in equipment, and pretty much every sophomore has to create some sort of lesson, whether that be on an animal or for their safety. A student brought in a tractor this year and all the elementary kids come over and they're allowed to climb around on the four-wheelers or tractors and pet the animals and then they get to learn about all those things a little bit by the sophomores and every kid in our FFA program teaching. Uh, the kids can just kind of enjoy themselves and then we also put together a packet with reading material or other fun games that they'll be able to continue to benefit from. Joining FFA was one of the greatest decisions I've ever made because it allowed me to find what I was good at. As I said earlier, I will be majoring in early childhood education. I have to thank FFA for this because it is from my project where I was going over with elementary that I figured out that is what I wanted to do. Whenever I have to give underclassmen advice, I will always say, join the Ag program. Even if they aren't interested in agriculture, it will make them better organized and more well-rounded person. It also might help them find what they're good at. Are there any questions? Uh, this FAA, uh, now do you take just the standard courses and then you have these other courses that are tied into F FA or? Yes, yeah, so like FFA is an elective, so, or it's the ag program. So the freshmen, like I was saying, the freshmen have their distinctive class, the sophomores have their class, juniors and seniors. And if you want to be an FFA, you have to take one of those four ag classes every so year. So it's just one period and yes. out, out of the day that way? Uh, some seniors, I didn't do it this year, but they have the opportunity to do a capstone project. So that would technically be two periods of FFA, but your one, you're going to be with your classmates. And then the second one, you would be just you one-on-one -on -one with the teacher, and they could do other projects. We've had students in the past who have built, I think one student built a trailer a few years ago, and like that was their project for the semester. But most kids only enroll in one act class. Does Fairview do a senior project? No. By Kicksville? Okay, no. I just wondered. Yep. <coughs> yeah. When you were assigned to do your business model and your friends, you know, kind of doing this chicken farm now, what was your business model? Um, I had the idea to do make cups and put like agriculture messages on them or like facts about what amount of like the agriculture contributes to our economy and or just like pictures of animals and I was going to sell those and then like the we had to create what are other people benefiting from our business and I was going to create a scholarship fund with the money I earned. Very cool. So how many members are there in that um, At Fairview there are 60 members I think. We have a lot of freshmen and sophomores but like in my class this year there's only three seniors. So especially when students go to Fort County, it kind of dwindles off because they join their ag program, but we have around 60 kids at Fairview. I would say only 35 are active though. Carrie, who's your FFA teacher at Fairview? Uh, Jessica Nagel. She's been there for, I think, six years. And Nagel, Jessica Nagel. Okay. How, how did that get started at Fairview and then Hicksville didn't get one of these FFAs? Hicksville used to have one. Did they really? 
Yeah. Okay. So I know, I think Farmer, Mark Center, and Sherwood all had them, and then I think ag has just always been a really prominent area in our community, and that's why kids are motivated to join. And then there's even some kids who just sign up to get as a freshman, and they end up being one of the most active kids, even though they've never had any sort of agriculture experience. No. Go ahead. Oh. So years ago, I was the only girl in, at Woodland. I went to Woodland. I was the only girl in FFA at that time. So I'm kind of curious, you know, because not that I'm a feminist, but how many girls do you say do you have a lot of girls? I now? would say we were about half and half. That's and awesome. it's funny because a couple years ago on our officer team, we only had two boys. Everything else was run by girls. <laughs> and I bet our last four or five FFA presidents have been girls too. This, this coming year is going to be a boy, but I bet the last four or five there's been girls. Well, you guys still have like a shop program and stuff, mm -hmm. don't you, Fairview? So can you do that aside from FFA or if you're going to take those type of classes, does it need to be connected to FFA? No, we got rid of our woodworking, I would say, six years ago. So now it's just if you want to be in the shop, the best bet would be to take the freshman and sophomore ag class because as a junior and senior, you're only going to get in the shop for a couple weeks, but as freshmen and sophomores, Freshmen get in the shop for an entire semester for welding, and sophomores get in the shop for an entire semester for woodworking. Was it a tough decision for you, Carrie? I followed, I followed you since junior high, when you guys were so successful. Was it a tough decision not to continue with sports after high school? Uh, yeah, definitely, especially basketball. It's always been my favorite sport, and I really wasn't sure what to do because with college athletics, there is a lot. A lot that goes into it, and I was deciding on whether to do education or go into the ag industry. And when you're going into ag, there's your chances of colleges, it gets slimmed down quite a bit because not very many colleges have that anymore, especially those who are small enough where I could go play. So that was a tough decision, but you have to let go of it sometimes. So. Well, you're obviously very bright to choose Ohio State, so. <laughs> yeah. Boy, I know. <laughs> so how many sausages? Oh, uh, that's the Young Farmers the FFA. Oh, okay. We helped one day, but I wasn't able to help because of basketball. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? When you said um, teaching kids to be on time, and I, um, I heard a guy say one time, if you're on time, you're late. Yep, that's what we go by too. We say that about, we have our officer um, meetings for FFA at 7.15. We have a couple of people that are trickling in about 7.20, so that's what we always like to tell them. If you're on time, you're late, but if you're gonna be on time, it's 10 minutes early. Can you introduce your parents? I don't think I know, I know them. Uh, this is my dad, Russell. He is a farmer. We live outside of Nay, and he also coaches basketball. And then that's my mom, uh, Susan. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if there's no more questions, I just want to thank you guys for having me, and thank you for all you do in our community. Thank you, Carrie. It's not often we get to hear from Fairview. Yeah. I appreciate you coming today. Uh, anybody else have any other announcements? If not, we'll dismiss with the pledge.